Hello, I'm Tamara Hawksworth from the dialysis surveillance team, and I'm going to tell you today about the new facility type and location that we've added in NHSN's dialysis component. So why did we add a new facility type and location? Well, increasingly patients are dialyzed in long-term care settings and other non-traditional settings by home health agencies and entities that provide dialysis services solely. And we were contacted by two state health departments asking how to track dialysis infections in those settings and how to enroll and set up those facilities. Currently, the populations in long-term care settings and other non-traditional settings are not captured as we only monitor infections in patients in ambulatory outpatient dialysis facilities. And there's been sentiment that infections and events in non-traditional settings should be tracked. So we want to enable facilities that conduct dialysis in non-traditional settings to enroll and report in events into NHSN. So based on this, we've added a new facility type for entities providing dialysis services in non-traditional settings and a new location to capture patients dialyzed in long-term care settings. With the addition of the new facility type, there are now four facility types in the NHSN dialysis component. The first and most common is the ambulatory hemodialysis facility identified as AMB-HEMO in NHSN, and that includes clinics where patients come in to receive dialysis treatment. They usually serve adults only, but they may have some pediatric and even home patients. The second type of dialysis facility is the ambulatory pediatric hemodialysis clinic, labeled as AMB-PED-HEMO in NHSN, and it's all so a clinic that patients come to, but the patients are pediatric, which is sometimes defined as 18 years and under, 17 years and under, 21 years and under, it varies. The third type, which is AMHDPD, and that stands for Ambulatory Home Dialysis and Peritoneal Dialysis, provides dialysis services to people in their homes. And this fourth type is our new fact type, am hemo NTDS, which stands for Ambulatory Hemodialysis in Non-Traditional Dialysis Settings, and that includes entities like home health agencies that provide dialysis services in long-term care and other non-traditional settings like prisons and LTACs, as well as entities that provide dialysis services exclusively in long-term care like Concerto and Dialyze Direct. In addition to the new facility type, we've added a new location to account for dialysis conducted in long-term care settings because that is becoming more and more common. The value label for this new location is COM non-acute LTC dial. And note that this is one of four location codes in a drop-down menu that you'll select. So while this label is long and it's not real intuitive, you won't need to recreate it. Also, the location is available in all four of our facility types because any of them could conduct dialysis in long-term care settings. I'll talk more about this later, but for now, I'm going to turn back to the new facility type and how to enroll it. When enrolling a new facility, most users will see this face page and will click the Enroll a Facility button. But note for brand new users who are registering first time for a SAMS account, their first steps will be a little different than what I'm showing you here. They're gonna follow guidance they receive from user support, but the majority of users will start this way on this page. When you click to enroll a new facility, this intro page will pop up asking you to specify if the facility has been enrolled before. Typically, you will say no. There's a message there in item one saying that if you select yes, you'll be asked to contact user support who will assist you. And then item two provides guidance if you only want to update the facility administrator or a component con 
contract contact and instructs you to select yes and once again be directed to user support who can help you out when you click no saying the facilities has not has not yet been enrolled this face page will pop up and that asks you for information like address phone number and such <clears throat> since it's a dialysis facility the H AHA ID will always be non applicable because that's American Hospital Association and since you're just enrolling this facility, it's likely you won't have a CMS certificate number and date. So you'll generally start this way and then update the, with the CMS information after the facility is fully activated. The VA station code will also be an A, and you'll be given an enrollment number by user support. And again, while a brand new user who submitted a SAMS registration form, they'll be emailed an enrollment number and that'll be entered here. But as an established user, like an LDO, for instance, they'll need to request an enrollment number from ServiceNow. And then you don't need to provide an object identifier. And once you've completed the info, you'll just click Continue. And clicking Continue brings you here to page two, where you will select the facility type from a drop-down menu and then select the NHSN comp components that you'll follow, which for dialysis will always be the dialysis component and healthcare personnel safety component if you're tracking flu and COVID vaccines and such. You'll also identify the facility administrator on this page and note that you can provide a different address or just click the copy address from facility administrator from facility to auto populate the clinic's address. Then you click continue. So we're still on page two, and I just want to show you here that when you click the drop down menu under facility type, you will need to scroll down a bit to find AM, HEMO, NTDS. You'll highlight that and hit enter and finish completing the information. And then on page three, you'll indicate the healthcare personnel safety component contact person. And note that you can always click the copy from facilitate facility administrator button if, if it is the same person. And again, it'll autofill all the required info on the page, or you can enter someone different. Here, I click the button to use the facility administrator as the HPS contact. On page four, you'll identify the lab director. And again, you can click that copy from facilitate, facilitate, facility administrator button or add somebody else. And here I did add someone else because the lab director is often someone different than the FA. On page five, you'll specify the dialysis component contact person. And again, you can either copy from the FA, since the FA is often the same person as the dialysis contact, or add someone else. Then click Continue. And then on page six, you will be asked to complete and submit the home dialysis survey before enrollment is complete. Now, I want you to know that we will be developing a survey specific to the NTDS fact type in the future. But for now, you'll complete the home dialysis survey. So you'll click that button. And then the home survey pops up and you'll go through and complete it. And if you're at all familiar with the outpatient dialysis practices survey, know that this, this survey is that one. Once you're done completing the survey, you'll click that submit button. And then once that's submitted, you'll get an immediate notice congratulating you on the enrollment of the new facility. At this point, the facility is enrolled, but not yet active. So I'll show you next how to activate the facility. Once you've enrolled the facility, you will get a notification email from NHSN saying that the facility was enrolled. And you can see here that I received two emails 
because I enrolled my facility in two components, the dialysis component and the healthcare personnel safety component. So you will get one notice for each component that you join. When you go into the email, and this one here is for the dialysis component, it tells you that in order to activate a facility and component, you must accept the agreement to participate and consent within 60 days. And it'll tell you how to do that with the link provided. This is the email for the HPS component, again telling you to log into NHSN with that link provided and accept the agreement to participate and consent. And once you've gone in and accepted the agreement to participate and consent, you'll get emails telling you that the facility and component are now activated and you can report data into NHSN. Now, once the facility is activated, you can then go into NHSN and you can look over your facility information by clicking facility in the blue left-hand navigation bar and then clicking facility info. This page will pop up and that allows you to edit information if you need to. And you can see here that your facility type is AM Hemo NTDS because that's what you selected when you enrolled the facility. Then if you scroll down that page, you'll see the components you selected. In this case, dialysis and healthcare personnel safety and below that, all the different contacts you established, the FA, lab director, and contacts for dialysis and HPS components. And here's where you can reassign those contacts if needed, like if someone leaves, using the reassign button. Now, earlier in the presentation, I mentioned that not only did we create a new facility type, but we also created a new location to capture patients dialyzed in long-term care settings because that's becoming more and more common. The new location is called hemodialysis conducted, conducted in LTC settings and you add it by clicking on that facility button in the blue left-hand navigation bar and then selecting the locations button. When you click the locations tab, this page is going to pop up and this is where you'll add the new location by completing the info in the red starred boxes. Now your code and label is created by you. It's what you come up with. You can call it George Clooney and you can label it handsome movie star, but you'll likely want to be descriptive and easily identifiable, especially when you have multiple locations and you're going to want to be able to distinguish it from your other locations. So after you provide a code and label, you'll select the location from the CDC location description box. The CDC location description is a system variable, so a drop-down menu is provided when you click on the down arrow in that box. And when you click on the down arrow, this drop-down list opens up and it does show a lot of locations. So you'll need to scroll down, scroll down a bit and find and select hemodialysis conducted in long-term care settings. And that becomes gray highlighted when you select it. And once you've provided your code and label and selected the location, it'll look like this. And then you click Add. Once you click Add, you'll need to click either the Find or the Display All button to see the newly added location in your table of locations. So adding locations is a part of facility setup as is adding users and giving them rights. And once you've set your facility up, you can then go in and run analyses and generate reports. But whether you add lo new locations or not, you can run analyses, you can generate many different types of reports under the analysis option. And here I've listed some of the more common reports that folks use, but there are many more. And you'll see once you click on the analysis option in that blue navigation bar. And I just want you to know that you can run analyses and reports across all locations, so facility-wide, or you can run them by separate locations. 
So this is what opens up when you click on the analysis button. It opens up into these different folders that you can further expand by clicking on the folder. And again, if you just want to run the report for all locations combined or facility wide, you don't need to do anything but click run report. And that's highlighted here in gray. When you do that, you'll get this report, which is a list of all events across all locations. But if you want to <clears throat> if you want to look at a specific location, you'll use the modify report option which is highlighted here in blue or gray. So just click Modify Report. And when you do that, this page pops up and that allows you to title your report and select a format like PDF or Excel, etc. And it also lets you to select, select different time periods, filters, or change the variables you want to display or sort by. So here, I want to run a report for a single long-term care location that I added earlier. And in this case, I'm going to run it for Mary Manor because that was the label I gave when I added the location earlier. And to do that, I'll click the Filters button and the table shown here opens up. And that allows me to select a variable from the drop-down list. And in this drop-down list, I'll scroll down to find the location label variable and highlight that. Then in the next box over, I'll select the value, and in this case, Mary Manor. Once I've selected my variable and values, I'll click Run. And this is the result of the report filtered to only show events for the location description of Mary Manor, uh, a much shorter list because it displays only events for the Mary Manor location. Again, you can run all the different NHSN reports for a singular location. I've only demonstrated the events line list report here today. But let me suggest that if you are not familiar with the analysis and reports module, it can be very helpful letting you see what's happening in your facility overall or in specific locations. And because it can be so helpful, I always tell folks to use it. And if you haven't used it, go in there and muck around. Uh, don't be afraid. Nothing can be broken. <laughs> so you can go in and you can try all sorts of different reports and see what they look like. So that was a demonstration of enrolling a new facility with our new non-traditional dialysis settings fact type, NTDS. We also added our new long-term care location and we ran analyses for the entire facility or a single location. But before I close, I just want to remind you about the dialysis component page on the NHSN website because it does have a lot of resources to help you enroll new facilities. And you can see here it's at the cdc.gov slash NHSN slash dialysis web address. You can scroll down for links to the dialysis component reporting protocols as well as modules for outpatient dialysis facilities and modules for home dialysis only facilities and other resources like FAQs and CMS requirements. It's just a good resource to have at your fingertips. And with that, I hope this overview provided you with the information you'll need to enroll our new facility type and add our new long-term care location. And I thank you so much for your time and attention.